Part 3, The Rival of Fear. We all know fear. When you experience fear, your body reacts. As the adrenaline rushes in, your heart races, your breathing accelerates, and your muscles tense. Sometimes that fear can be intensely fun. You know, like that rush you feel when you're on the roller coaster, or that rush of that game that's about to start. Other times, it can be terrifying, as a panic grips you utterly, that you cannot even think. You begin to shake and fret and sweat. Underneath, those bodily experiences are common. We fear when we encounter something we can't control. We fear when we face the prospect of either losing something that we love or experiencing something bad. We even fear when we face the prospect of gaining something wonderful, when that thing seems too impossibly wonderful for us to obtain. That is so true. So, when you think about the fear of the Lord, there are so many misconceptions. We hope that your heart and your mind will be open to see how to learn the fearfully wonderful God that we serve. Yes. And that understanding will utterly, ultimately, excuse me, lead you to worship His holiness. Yes. Hello, I'm Lynetta. I am Patrick. And together we are co-founders of Vertical, Vertical Connections, Connections Inc. Inc. If you are new to this channel, please be sure to subscribe. Everyone click the like button and share this message. Also, we greatly appreciate when you leave comments, and we look forward to those in the future. Scripture explains what the fear of the Lord is, what it means to have a delightful fear of God, and practically what the benefits are to clearing up all the misconceptions. Mm -hmm. it, is not, uh, it is not common for us to think that fear is all the same. I hope not, right. because they, it is not. Mm -hmm. Scripture often commands us, do not be afraid, yet we're told fear God. We've also read that perfect love casts out all fear. From seat belts and airbags in our cars to the removal of lead, paint, and asbestos in our houses, our safety is guaranteed more than our shorter-lived ancestors ever imagined. Today's society lives in a paradox. Despite living in the safest and the most advanced time in recorded history, we have never been more fearful and anxious. But the problem? Mm -hmm. The problem lies within the fact that our culture has chosen to dismiss God as the proper object of fear. Fear is a complicated emotion. As children, we love to leap out and scare our friends by yelling, Boo! <laughs> and yet, at the same time, as kids, we were scared to death of the dark. Scared of the monsters underneath the bed, in the closets, behind the curtains. But yet fascinated and propelled by our fears. Not much has changed as we have become adults. No. Nope. Many adults love scary movies with thrills that bring them face to face with their darkest fears. Mm -hmm. But also we agonize over the dreadful things that could happen to us, such as the fear of losing our lives, fear of losing loved ones, or fear of losing our health. We fear that we might fail. We fear that we might even be rejected. Fear is probably the strongest human emotion, and yet it is one that baffles us the most. When it comes to the Bible, for many people, the picture seems equally confusing. Is fear a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Many times in Scripture, fear is a bad thing, from which Christ has come to rescue us. The Apostle John writes in 1 John 4, 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect fear casts out fear. Fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, prophesied that Jesus' salvation would mean that we, being delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve God without fear and holiness and righteousness before Him all our days. Indeed, the most frequent command in Scripture, do not be afraid. Found 465 times, no, 365 times in the Bible. Thank you for that fun nugget. Sure. And yet again and again in Scripture, we are called to fear. Even more strangely to our ears, we're called to fear God. We read in Proverbs 9.10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Also in the book of Proverbs, we read the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
as found in Proverbs 1 7. David prays in Psalm 86 11, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Also, Job's faithfulness is summed up when he is described as being a blameless and righteous man who fears God. This was simply not in the Old Testament affairs that the New Testament rises above. Jesus in Luke 18 describes the unrighteous judge as one who neither feared God nor respect man. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 7, let us cleanse ourselves from the ever defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Yes. In fact, the fear of God is so important as a biblical theme that Professor John Murray wrote, the fear of God is the soul of godliness. In the 17th century Puritan, the 17th century Puritan, uh, John Owen, he speaks on this as the fear of the Lord means the whole worship of God, all your obedience which we owe unto him. For some, this can be confusing. On the one hand, we're told that Christ frees us from fear. On the other hand, we are told that we ought to fear the fear of God no less. There are many who say fearing God just feels negative. It doesn't seem to square with the God of love and grace that we meet in the gospel. Some might ask, why would any God worth loving want to be feared? And it's made worse by the impression that fear and love are two different languages preferred by two different Christian camps, and perhaps even two different theologies. Let us cut through the confusion. We want to rejoice in the paradox. The gospel both frees us from fear and right. gives us fear. Frees us from a crippling fear, as we will see. Giving us instead the most delightful fear. For followers of Christ, the fear of God really does not mean being afraid of God. Rather, what we'll see through the series is that Scripture has many hefty surprises for us as it describes the fear of God. In Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, we're giving a beautiful description of the Messiah filled with spirit. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. The, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, And his delight yes. shall be in the fear of the Lord. Here we see the fear of the Lord is not something the Messiah will be without. He has the fear of the Lord, and he's not reluctant about it. Throwing off the fear of God has not made our society happier and less fretful. It is quite the opposite. It, it says, His delight is in the fear of the Lord. This should force us to ask, what is the fear that could be Christ-like, that, Christ, that would make Christ delight in? Before we dive into the good news of the Bible, has to share for us, let's look at some of the fears that uh, make us pause in society today. Seeing where our society has gone to helps us to understand why we have a problem with fear and why the fear of God is just the tonic that we need today. Everywhere you turn, the majority of culture is talking about fear. It is. Fear in social media, fear on television, people fret about extreme weather political turmoil, the global terrorism, and in our digitalized world, the spread of which information is transferred, mm -hmm. causes more worry than ever before, yes. fears that we would never sh have shared before or even heard of are now crossing the world in seconds. As a whole, we are an uncertain and anxious culture. Anyone in management knows the incredible amount of red tape around health and safety. And yet, it hasn't made us feel safer. If anything, we triple check our locks even more obsessively. This certain safety that we long for eludes us, leaving us feeling vulnerable like victims of the slim mercy of everyone and everything else. Look here. Therein lies the paradox that we face. Right. Extraordinary paradox. 
Today we live more mm. safely than we've ever done before. Mm. From seat belts and airbags in our cars to the removal of, what did you say? Lead paint and asbestos. From our homes. Our safety is guaranteed more than ever. <laughs> our safety is guaranteed more than our shorter lived ancestors could ever imagine. Safety has become the holy grail in our culture. Like the holy grail, it has become something that we can't ever quite reach. Protected like never before, our culture is skittish and panicky like never before. How can this be? Where does the paradox come from? Our culture has lost God as the proper object of fear. For the fear of God has a happy, healthy fear that controlled our other fears. It reigned in anxiety. With our society today having removed God as the appropriate object of healthy fear, our culture is becoming more and more neurotic and anxious. Without a kind Father's providential care for us, we are left uncertain about the shifting sands of morality and reality and ousting God from our culture. Other concerns? Personal health and the safety of the planet? These concerns have assumed a divine ultimate level. Look here, we are never to worship the creation, only the creator. And thus we feel helplessly fragile, society filled with anxiety. Mm -hmm. The suggestion is that the loss and the removal of the fear of God is the root cause of our culture's anxiety. This is a real blow to atheism because atheism promised exactly the opposite. Atheism sold the idea that if you liberate people from the belief in God, you'll liberate them from fear. Culture is flooded with anxiety. Fear has come to be seen and whole as a negative thing, and Christians have been swept along, mm -hmm. sucked into joining society's negative assessment of fear. It's no small wonder then that we shy away from talking about the fear of God because of fear. We see it is a negative thing despite its prominence in scripture. It's understandable, but yet very tragic. It was the removal of the fear of God that ushered in our age of anxiety. It is the fear of God we will see that is the very antidote to our fretfulness. Mm -hmm. The fact is, not all fear is the same. Not all fear is unhealthy or unpleasant. We must distinguish between different sorts of fear between wrong fear and right fear. As we look at how scripture details different types of fear, some negative, some positive, by the study of the word, scripture by scripture, we can rejoice in the fact that the fear of God is not like the other fears that torment us. It is then that we can appreciate how it is a fear, how it is a fear that causes the light to right. Christ. It is a fear that causes a delight to his people. Mm -hmm. The fear of God is the one positive, wonderful fear that deals with our anxieties. We pray that this message helps you better understand that not all fear is negative or bad. We look forward to having you join us for the benefits of the fear of God in our next video. Yes. So until next time, get connected to, to Go, Go Vertical. vertical. Bye-bye.